What's up gamers, this is going to be a very big video. Have you ever found yourself roaming in the depths and then you find a weapon with a sparkle at the end of its name? Well, these are known as pristine weapons. And I'm gonna be showing you how to get every single pristine weapon in the game. I spent over 24 hours researching and exploring the depths in order to figure this out. And I'm going to need the entire Tears of the Kingdom community to comment down below any information they find on top of the information that I provide in this video. Here are the basic rules and information to follow. So please don't skip this part. Pristine counterparts will always have a higher attack and durability compared to their decayed versions. Finding these weapons are not tied to your story progression at all. For example, you don't have to start the Zora storyline to get access to Zora pristine weapons or beat any dungeons or temples. You must find the decayed weapon version and break it. That will unlock the pristine weapon version on the ghost soldier in the depths. You can use Amiibos too to spawn in decayed weapons to break them faster, and they might even give you pristine weapons too, but I suggest doing it for the decayed weapons so they unlock in the depths. Now that you understand how this works, let me tell you some very important information for the depths for the ghost soldiers now. When you remove a weapon off a statue, it'll no longer spawn in another weapon. You will need a blood moon to occur in order for the weapons to respawn. Blood moons do not cause new weapons to replace the previous ones that you have already loaded in or rendered in on the ghost soldiers. If you saved after rendering in a bunch of ghost soldier weapons, they will remain as the same weapon even after a blood moon. You must throw it off the ghost soldier that you already rendered in. You can save before you render in a ghost soldier to see the weapon that it may hold. If it isn't the weapon you want, you can reload from your save point that you didn't already render in the ghost soldier. I like to use light roots as my hard save. Then you can reapproach the ghost soldier to see if you get a different weapon. Now here's the really cool part. Once you see the weapon you want, you can save right in front of it before you pick it up. This will 100% lock in the weapon and you can pick it up and look at the modifier. And if it's not what you want, you can reload the save in front of the weapon and pick it up again to find a different modifier. The higher modifiers might be tied to your experience in the game. So if you're not getting anything good, just kill more bosses in the game, which I have so many guides on to be able to farm them and get you a lot of EXP. Each ghost soldier holding a weapon has their own typing of weapon, which I marked up on my map with symbols to help you. Star symbols mean ghosts have single-handed weapons. Sword symbols are ghosts who hold two-handed weapons. Person symbols refer to ghosts with spears. And crystal symbols are special spots with multiple ghost soldiers. I also have heart symbols here, but I'll explain that later in the video. Now let's move on to the weapon types and locations. Hey, real quick, before we move on to the next weapon, you should hit that subscribe button because it helps out the channel a lot and you get amazing information like this that no other channel covers first. Now, soldiers weapons and travelers weapons are gonna be very common in your game and pretty much you've probably already grabbed a bunch of these and broken them. So I'm already gonna just start this section off in the depths. This is gonna be the light route right underneath Central Square of Hyrule Castle Town Ruins. And I marked up the map very well over here for you guys to see. There are a lot of single-handed weapons and spears over here. And pretty much there's platforms everywhere here and I can just show you one as we approach this spot over here. It's gonna be just basically a lot of traveler stuff. It's nothing too exciting but as you start your game pretty much everything down here is going to look like these until you start breaking the higher tier weapons. So if I jump up here you'll just see that it's gonna be pretty much basic weapons. There's a traveler's sword and then if you look across there, that's going to be a regular traveler's spear. And pretty much this entire area is going to be filled with traveler's weapons. Now there is one hot spot, which is the diamond on the map with three of these over here. It is going to have the traveler's spear, the traveler's sword, and the traveler's claymore. So if you want to just collect the trifecta of the traveler's weapons, you can come over here pretty much and, and just get anything. Everything here is pretty much your travelers or anywhere on the map where you don't have anything good. So keep that in mind, um, pretty basic stuff here. So yeah, I just wanted to get the traveler stuff out the way. Now, I know a lot of you are gonna be very interested in getting the Royal Guards Claymore pristine weapons. So I'm gonna be showing you a really nice spot in the depths where you can get yourself some nice spicy weapons that are Royal Guards, Royal Claymores, and Knight Claymores as well, as well as like anything within those lines for double-handed or single-handed. All right, so what you wanna do is go to the Corum Light Route. This is gonna be right here on the map. If I go to the above area, this is going to be right below this area. So the Sahasra Slope area right underneath it. So pretty much from Sahasra Slope Skyview Tower going under here, the Morak Shrine. The best entry point would be the East Hill Chasm to go ahead and get down here. Now, once we're down here, pretty much 
what you want to do is look at these markups. So straight ahead of me is going to be where you're going to be getting the best weapon in the game for Lino slaying. And mostly all royal weapons and all the fancier weapons are going to be found right in Hyrule Castle at the start of the game. So you can go ahead, get those weapons, break them all, and then they will start unlocking down the depths. It's the easiest way to do it. Seriously, just grab everything from Hyrule Castle. And when you approach this ghost over here, you'll be able to see the sword of your choice. Now, I have an example where I reload my game multiple times and when I come here, it's sometimes going to be the Royal Guard's Claymore, and if you save and reload from the Light Route, it can be the Knight's Claymore, it can be the Soldier's Claymore, it can be pretty much any Royal Claymore or any of these Claymores anytime you reload. And the cool part is, which we also showed at the beginning of this video, is that when you save, once you decide what you want, you can keep reloading again and again until you get the one of your choice. And pretty much I was going for a plus 10 here, and you can see as I reload it, once I saved in front of the weapon, it's almost like using Octorox to get the enhancement you want on a weapon. So keep that in mind as well. Now, straight north of this marker here, where we just came from, is going to be this marker over here for single-handed weapons. And you can see that there is a Royal Broadsword in front of me. But if you see again here at this other recording, this is where I was able to get the Royal Guard sword. This will also adjust and be different depending on what you reroll with your saves. Now, if you go further northeast from this star all the way up to here by this person icon, which I'm using as a spear, you're going to bump into some royal spears. Right in front of me is the royal halberd, but in another save and another reload or a different blood moon that happens, I got myself a royal guard spear. And the beauty of the royal guard weapons is that when they're on their last few hits, they deal a lot of damage, which is why we go usually for the royal guards claymore on the lionels and we use it for that. But here, you're going to be getting some good weapons uh, for durability. So if you want just some throwaway weapons in battle for flurry rushes and other things, definitely come to this spot over here by the Corum Light Route. But this one is pretty much close to this Light Route over here, which is the Coracut Light Route if you want to get the spear. So yeah, go ahead and enjoy yourself some good weapons here. Let's discuss the importance of Gerudo weapons, because why would you want to get them? Well, Gerudo weapons are very, very special because if I was to go into one, you'll see that it'll always say attaching material greatly enhances the material's power, but doesn't add as much durability. So you can see that this Gerudo Claymore currently is a 32 with an attack up 10. So it's basically a 22 with a bonus of 10. Now, if I was to take, for example, use this Lino Horn and I was to fuse it, pay attention that it's 32. We are adding the Lino Horn on it. And now this blade does 142 damage naturally on its own. It doesn't even have to be broken to do that much damage. If you can see the Silver Lino Saber Horn is actually 55 infused power. But when it's attached to the weapon, it actually doubles up and goes to 110. So the item that is attached is always going to get doubled. So keep that in mind when you're attaching things to the weapon. And that's pretty much the importance of Gerudo weapons. Now let's show you where you can get some of these weapons. Okay, now I'm gonna show you a technique that you can do in order to get the weapons of your choice in the specific region that you are. Now I'm currently in the Gerudo area. And yes, even though it's looking really cold, I am still still in the Gerudo Highlands. And I'm going to show you a little trick that we use to get the specific weapons we want so that we can get the decayed weapons further down. So for those who don't know, I'm at the Atutsum Shrine, which is to the east of Gerudo Highland Skyview Tower. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to hop off this thing over here and it's going to bring us to a really awesome spot, which you can use as well. It should say Statue of the Eighth Heroine. And if you drop down here, you'll see two like likes, okay? When you see them, when we get here, we're just gonna go ahead and just save your game. The reason why we save our game is because these like likes are gonna have RNG to them when they finish dropping something. So I'm just gonna aim, throw something fire at it because your boy ran out of arrows. And I definitely need to go Lino farming. So I'm gonna have to watch my video to get all my spots for the Lynels again. All right, so this guy dropped a chest. And we saved beforehand, so let's go over to this one too. I'm gonna go ahead with that fire fruit. Yeah. There we go, and beat it up. And what I want specifically is a Gerudo weapon, Gerudo Claymore, or whatever weapon you're looking for specifically. So I'm gonna open this one up. I got a Gerudo shield. Okay, not looking for a shield, not interested. And this, I'm hoping to get a Gerudo Claymore. Got a scimitar. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna reload my game again at the exact same spot where I saved, and try again, and I'll come back when I get what I need. 
There we go. And after a couple of tries, got my claymore. But you can also go for a scimitar here if you want to. Or if you don't have one. After you get the claymore, just go ahead and uh, you can break it. Or just waste it on an enemy. Whatever you want. Just you have to break it. All right. Oh, that should spawn underground. Another great spot to get Gerudo weapons is going to be from this place over here by these bones. This is called the West Gerudo Underground Ruins. And basically all you got to do is just fly out of Gerudo Highland Skyview Tower and head over to that direction over here on the map. Now, once you arrive here, you'll notice that there is an electric light lake on the wall. Make sure to just go ahead and save in front of it. And what we're going to do is pretty much just save spam until you get yourself a Gerudo Scimitar or a Claymore. I'm going for a scimitar here because I got my claymore from the other spot. Once you get your Gerudo scimitar, just go ahead and break it. And once you've broken it, it's officially unlocked in the depths as a non-decayed weapon. If you need the Gerudo spear, there's a simple place to get it, and that's going to be right in Gerudo town. So teleport where the shrine is and drop down from the shrine, and you're literally going to go right over here. Drop down right over here. And your spear should be right over here. Grab your spear and then uh, just break it. And then right after this, it'll break. And congratulations, your Gerudo spear will now show up in the underground and not be decayed. All right, it's time to go to the depths to get ourselves some pristine Gerudo weapons. Now that we're in the depths, this is going to be a very easy hunt for our Gerudo pristine weapons because it's going to be right exactly underneath Gerudo Desert. And the entire area that you're going to be needing to search is just going to be this area. We don't have to go anywhere else to get our pristine weapons, which are going to have a lot higher attack than their decayed counterpart. Let's go hunt them. Here is a spot where I got the Gerudo spear. This is located right by this light route over here by the abandoned Kara Kara mine down in the abandoned, I mean, just right below the Gerudo area. I mean, look at that. The light route's right there. The spear's right here, which means you can go by that light and save before running up to this spear over here. So this is a great spot. Now, here are some other spots for the spear. You have one a little bit towards the east of it as well. And then going down south, we have another one over here. And then by this light route, we have some more spears around this area. So two to the west of that, and then one over here southeast of that. So these are a lot of areas where you can get your chances of spear. Here is a spot where I found a Gerudo Claymore. It is located right over here, marked by the sword icon. And it's pretty much just a ways from this light route. So southeast from this light route. And then there's other spots I also have marked on the map where you can get these double-handed Gerudo Claymores, the pristine ones, to show up. It's all marked by these. And they all have a chance of pretty much becoming the pristine version. And you can see how close they are by certain light routes. So feel free to also take pictures and mark these up on your map as necessary. That way, whenever a Blood Moon respawns, you can come and get them at any time. This is a Gerudo Scimitar, and this is the location where I have mine on my map. For context, this is going to be in between where this light route is and where this light route is. You can see that it's a diagonal directly from the abandoned Gerudo mine. Just so you have context where it is exactly. And I'm just going to zoom out for you guys so you can see it. Now, other spots where they can spawn is one is directly right to the west of it. You have one that can also be over here, one literally right by this light route from the mine. And basically all these stars that you see on the map have chances of becoming the scimitar. So you have a lot of chances depending on the spawn for this one. Now that we're done with all the Gerudo's pristine weapons, let's go and get some Zora pristine weapons. So there's gonna be three weapons that we're gonna be going for. The Zora sword, the Zora spear, and the Zora longsword. Now in order to get these weapons, Weapons. The most simple thing to do if you're maybe mid game, late game, and you forgot where you got your original ones, if you broke them, if you replaced them out, is going to be the caves surrounding Zora's domain. For this example, I pretty much did all my hunting in the Upland Zorana by road cave, which is pretty much just south of Upland Zorana Skyview Tower. It's the second one down over here. And inside, I was basically going to farm a like like. Now, when you find a like like in the Zora domain, you're going to want to go ahead and save your game instantly before you even attack it. Because what happens? is the game is going to create an auto save as soon as you beat one and you don't want that to happen so go ahead save right before one and then beat it up until it drops its treasure chest once it drops it you're going to see an item that appears and it could either be your sword your spear or your long sword and pretty much you're going to keep spamming whatever like likes you find until you get the weapon of your choice now i basically did this one after three blood moons because i was just too lazy to find another cave but if you know your caves well you'll be able to find any weapon a lot easier at that one time now once you get these weapons you want to just completely break your sword break your spear 
and break your longsword. By breaking all three of these Zora weapons, you'll then be able to have access to them in the depths and unlock their pristine forms to be on the ghost statues down below. Now let's talk about the Zora pristine weapons and why you should get them. These pristine weapons are very interesting because when you are wet, you're gonna see an activation over here. When it, you have that little blue symbol, that means you are wet. So typically a Zora pristine spear is gonna be doing 11 damage, but when it's wet, it's gonna be doing 22 damage. Now here's the cool part. When it's wet, it's also going to have the attachment do double the damage. So if we were to drop this Lino Horn, which has a attack power of 55, and we're going to fuse it with this weapon. Look at that. Look at those numbers jump up. And now we look back, the Zora Spear is going to also double up the attachment power of the Silver Lionel Saber Horn. So now you're getting a 55 going into 110 plus the 22, which is really cool. And you get a whole 132 damage with this weapon. The same is going to be applying for the swords as well. So fun weapon to use. This is pretty much why you want to get these higher durability and higher damage. Now, let's go to the depths to get yourself some pristine Zora weapons. Okay, welcome to the depths. And pretty much where we're going to be hunting for these pristine Zora weapons are going to be right underneath Zora's domain. Yes, look how smart I am by transitioning to this place right under where I was. Right over here is where we'll be going for our weapons. Now, the first weapon that we'll be hunting is going to be our spear, the Zora pristine spear. And what's really cool about that is it's right over here at this light root right here. The Ui Noj light root, or you know what? However you say it, I'm just gonna say it's this light root to the left of the abandoned Lineru mine. And I have a very high success rate of always finding a spear right over here. So this is one of the most fantastic places you can go in order to grab one of these pristine spears. Now, I've also marked up other spots around here that do have spears, and these may have a possible chance of giving you your Zora spear. So keep these in mind and check these out when you are exploring the area. It can go up to the wetlands, up to here. And if any of you guys find any new spots for the spear, you can also let me know in the comments. The Zora sword is going to be located right over where I am, and it's going to be from the Anihi light route, which is going to be to the east of the abandoned Lineru mine, right over here. And then it's going to be right at this spot here. And uh, that's where you're going to be able to get the Zora sword. Now, the other spots where you can get it are going to be marked up with the stars on the map. So you can get one south of that you can get one over here. You can get one even at this location, pretty much here as well. There are also a lot of other star spots. So if you find any, please write that in the comments as well for everyone so they can get themselves a Zora sword. But my spot should help and you should be able to refresh this one specifically. Now, this is the Zora long sword. And this is one of the locations where I found it on my map, pretty much from this light route over here. Let me zoom out here so you get exactly the proper distance. So central, here's the here's the center part where the abandoned Lineru mine is. And then you're gonna come down over here and you're gonna find this at this light route. And from this light route, you're gonna climb up a hill. So where I am is currently up, 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 up a hill. So you're going to have to have a flying device to bring you up here um, as this one is in the higher terrain. But this is where I got it. It's been pretty stable a couple, uh, two or three times. Other locations, it do include these other sword marks on my map within this area. So um, these are other spots where you can get it if it does spawn. But this one specifically has been very consistent for me. So I do suggest you do some resets over here and try to get this one. Also, mine looks really cool because I attached something to it. Congrats, now you have all your pristine Zora weapons, but now it's time to move on to something special that a lot of people don't know, the pristine forest dweller weapons. Well, you might be wondering what on earth are forest dweller weapons? Well, these are very interesting weapons that can only be unlocked via cleansing the quest in the Korok forest. So pretty much the Deku tree is gonna be really sick and you gotta go have to go inside of it to the bottom and fight a gloom hands as well as a phantom Ganon. Once you clear that out, the whole entire Korok forest is going to be completely safe and sound, allowing you to progress on with this quest. Now, let me show you something here. Once you're done and the forest looks all nice and happy, uh, you're gonna pretty much go to the top of this tree in order to get the base weapon. So come up to here and ascend right from the middle of its mouth. Keep going up one more layer. Or if you found a better way to the top, then just get to the top. Okay, and when you arrive on top of the tree, you're gonna find a little Korok here that's gonna basically talk to you about a treasure hunt and it's gonna initiate a quest line. And pretty much you're gonna find a forest dweller's decayed spear 
right over here. And you're going to pick up that weapon and you're going to smash it and completely break it. I already smashed mine for the sake of the video, but this is where this one's located. And if you want the sword, it's going to be located right up here right by him. Now, the only way these weapons will appear is if you initiate this quest line. You cannot come up here and find this on its own. So remember that. Now, let me tell you the cool thing about Forest Dweller weapons. The best part about Forest Dweller weapons is that they have a special ability where you can attach an item to it. And this item can be used over and over again. Example, this Dazzle Fruit can be smacked every time it recharges and you can go ahead and flashbang pretty much any enemy you want at any time. You can also add Muddle Buds on this and Muddle Buds will confuse enemies and you can keep on using it. Now, the benefit of the Forest Dweller Spear is that it's going to have a higher attack than its counterpart, which is the Cade ones. The Pristine ones are always going to be great and they're gonna have longer durability. That means you can use these more and more to initiate fights with enemies. And once you get the Forest Dweller Sword, make sure that you go ahead and break it. You can also attach a Puff Shroom to it so you can smoke screen yourself completely so you can be a ninja when you're fighting the enemies that you face. Now let's go ahead to the depths so you can get your hands on these pristine Forest Dweller weapons. So this is pretty much going to be right underneath the Korok Forest, right below. This is where we're gonna go in order to do this. Now, <laughs> I did explain earlier that you did need to do a quest in order to get here and the spot to get here is actually right here in the mean she would so you're gonna have to go here and uh, then a uh, gloom hands is gonna show up as you're approaching here so get ready to fight a gloom hands but then you'll have access to this area and uh, the whole korok thing anyway now that we're down here pretty much there's going to be a very few spots that you're going to be able to get these weapons because these are not going to matter as these are going to be double-handed weapons and we're not hunting those when it comes to going under the Korok Forest. We're going to be focusing on the Forest Dweller Spears, which are marked by these guys, and be focused on this, which is the sword. Pretty much these are the locations where you can get it. I've gotten my Forest Dweller Sword about three times already this exact spot right over here. This is where I got my sword. And if it's never showing up as a Forest Dweller Sword and it's always a Traveler's Spear, well, then you either did a, something wrong where you didn't break the Forest Dweller's sword, or you just have to reload from the shrine in order to get it. And like I mentioned, this is the only spot that I was able to find a sword, and it's right from this light route over here. Now, this was the location where I found this Forest Dweller Spear, the pristine version. It's going to be right at this spot, but there is another spear spot just to the south of it. But this is pretty much the one I found, and it's going to be cross intersection between this light route over here as well as this light route over here. So just go ahead and save spam at a light route to get the spear. If you don't see it right away and it ends up being a traveler's spear, and then you should be able to get both your pristine forest dweller sword and your pristine forest dweller spear. These are the only two ones in the game. There is no forest dweller claymore, nothing else, just sword and a spear. So good luck. It's time to move on to our next pristine weapon. Now let's talk about the next weapons that we're going to be getting, which is going to be the pristine Rito weapons, also known as the feathered weapons. So we have the feathered spear and the feathered edge that we'll be grabbing in this section. Now, the cool part about these weapons is that when you attack, they actually send out a gust of wind. So you can just imagine the fun possibilities when you can combine these weapons with other fusions like elementals and using an elemental, you can push back another enemy. So there's a lot of fun things that you can do with this specific weapon. Now, here's the important thing to know. So in order to get these weapons, one of the best strategies is going to be able to go into caves. Now, the cave that I I pretty much just went into was the Bright Cap Cave, which is located by this shrine southeast of the Lucky Clover Gazette. So this is the one I went to. In Bright Cap Cave, there is a like like that is there when you come in after you get past this Horblin. And this like like is going to actually contain RNG drops for these specific weapons. So what you want to do when you come in front of this like like, as we previously said, is save in front of it. After you save in front of it, you're then going to go ahead, take out the like like, and you should be able to get the weapons of your choice, the feathered spear and the feathered sword. Now, when you get the decayed versions of these weapons, you're going to want to make sure that you immediately break them. And as soon as you break both of them, you'll then be able to have them spawn in the depths in their nice, crispy, pristine forms which have higher attack and higher durability. Also, if anyone knows other spots and other great caves where you can farm these weapons, please let us know in the comments below. Now, let's head to the depths to get these weapons. So when we're in the depths, in order for us to hunt these pristine feathered weapons, we're gonna have to be able to look at this entire area. Now, what I mean by that is if you're looking at Hebra, the entire area, basically Hebra, Rito Village, this Tabantha area, this is all gonna be possibilities where the drops for these 
these feathered weapons can happen. Now, if we go to the map, you can see that I have the stars marked on the map and I have the people figures marked on the map. So that's going to indicate our sword and our spears. Now, one of the most consistent spots where I get feathered spears is going to be located right over here. Let me jump up here. As you can see, I'm already holding one and I have found another one. So you can see that consistency right there. And this is pretty much going to be right over here at this light route, at this light route where this water puddle is. Pretty much south of the abandoned Hebra mine, keep going south, this light route over here. If I was to give you an overworld location, it would be right under the Piper Ridge. So this has been very consistent for me. And also you'll be able to fly down from this light route to this. You can always save spam to get the correct spear if it's not this one. Now, this next location is going to be over here on the map where I got the Feather Sword Pristine version. And this is going to be located all the way by the top right area of this region by this light route. So from this light route, you want to make your way down to this star and you'll be able to get the sword. I've gotten the sword a couple times over here, but there are other sword spots I have marked up on the map just in case you wanted to get to it, like this one over here and like this one here, as well as once around the mid center point east of the abandoned Hebra mine. So right over here, so you can use this light route to get over to this one. So there's a couple options and you might bump into more than I have. So feel free to also mention that in the comments below. And that's pretty much how you're going to be able to get your feathered sword or your feathered edge, which is basically a sword. And just like that, congrats, you now have your feathered weapons and we can go ahead and leave this area and blow everything away because, you know, that's that's what it does. It's a feathered weapon. Let's move on to the next pristine weapons. Now, let's talk about some awesome Yiga clan weapons. Pretty much, this is going to be the eightfold long blade, which is really cool because its description pretty much says it cleaves the wind and creates vacuum. So when you attack with this weapon, boom, it throws out a whole entire. Look at that. It's so freaking cool. Yeah, a little razor winds that can chop the enemy up. And this is the eightfold blade, which is going to basically yield you very powerful sneak strikes on enemies. So you put that with a nice armor that does some sneak attacks and you're really good. Now, in order to get these two weapons, you probably by now have fought some Yiga clan members throughout your entire journey. And then sometimes I never really picked up the weapons. So a very consistent spot where you can go to always fight them is going to be the ancient Akala tech lab located all the way in the northwest part of the map. Now, I'm going to go ahead and uh, just knock on this door. Sure. And this is where the two clan members are going to pop out. <laughs> and the fight will begin. So there you go. You can see the, the weapons in action. Whoop. And then I'm going to just pop up over here. Be careful of this guy. What he doesn't know is I got the pristine version. And got him. You didn't see that coming. So pretty much when you're done with these guys, you're going to pick up this eightfold long blade from the bigger Yiga member, and you're going to pick up the eightfold blade from the smaller Yiga guy, the, the, the easier one right over here. And what you want to do is immediately grab them and go ahead and smash them to the ground and break them. You'll be able to have these unlocked down in the depths below. Now let's head down to the depths so you can quickly get the pristine versions that I'm currently holding right now. Okay, now that we're in the depths, this one was actually very, very difficult to figure out because the Jaeger clan is everywhere on the map and I literally had to go through every part of the depths to figure this one out. Now, this location is going to be pretty much right under the Dueling Peak stable area. This is all the location where you need to go. And when you look at the underground here, yeah, you can see it's pretty nicely marked up with a lot of good spots here. And we're not going to really care about this icon over here because these are just going to be spears that you can find obviously check them out if you're interested but these are just basically pristine spears in the area now the ones that we're going to be focusing on are the sword icons which are going to be for the double-handed ones and the star icons which are going to be for our single-handed weapons now i know this weapon looks super cool with this exact fit i'm wearing because i look like just a straight up shogun samurai this i cover in an entire video that you should definitely watch it's going to be on my channel here it's called the secret mystic armor set you must get now you know why you must get it that's not really clickbait you look like this and you get this weapon come on you gotta click you gotta watch that after this anyway let's continue on and go for our weapons now there's a very very consistent spot that i've gotten in about three times already and it's back-to-back -back weapons it's gonna be right over here in this location so if you can see this is the light route over here that you can access this is the dueling canyons mine and right northeast of that at this star location 
Let me zoom out for you so you can get a better context and zoom in. It's going to be exactly where you're going to go. So right here is going to be where I find always or usually I'm not going to say always because it could be different for you guys. But all you got to do is save spam in order to get what you want is the eightfold blade, which is the single handed weapon right over here for sneak striking. This is the pristine version. And check this out right across there. <laughs> it's going to be the pristine eightfold long blade right there. So back to back weapons now. Like I mentioned on my map, you want to follow the swords. These are going to be options for you in order to get it. The swords and the stars. And there's other spicy places within this area. And I might as well just show you guys while we're here. So yeah, you can see like, look, this is a totally RNG other sword that I didn't get as I go further down, just so you guys have context. If we go further down, here is a random knight's broadsword. So you can see like sometimes the markers will be a little bit different. Now, if you haven't seen, I do have a diamond spot marked on the map, which is really close by. So let me just head over and show you this diamond mark. Okay, so this giant diamond mark I have, which is by this Colosseum over here, is pretty much where you're going to have three spirits. On my maps, you'll always notice these diamond spots, but this one is right over here by Dueling Peak. So check this out if you want any of these style weapons here. And sometimes they might rotate, so you might be lucky or they might just, you know, sometimes just remain the same. But there's a bunch of spots here that you can check out as well. So that's pretty much going to be the Dueling Peaks area in order to get your Yiga weapon. So yeah, it, this is this is dope. You should definitely get these. Next up, we're going to be talking about boomerangs to give you a little break before we get to the next section. And boomerangs also come in pristine weapons. There's going to be a big boomerang, which is a two handed boomerang and a very little boomerang, which is a single boomerang. Right now, I'm at the location where you can find yourself a nice big boomerang. And I'm going to show you exactly where that is on the map. This is going to be in the Elden area, Death Mountain, right exactly where I have marked this sword. So go ahead and mark this up in wherever you want to go. Swords are usually for double handed weapons. So this is a double handed weapon. This guy is always going to be having a double handed boomerang and I fuse one to a Gleok weapon so we can hunt it down. Here we go. So this is what you're going to do. Just fly in on it just like this. He's going to be like, what happened? And then that's it. He's gone. And then, <laughs> and then you can go ahead and grab that giant boomerang and make sure to break it. So when you're breaking it, you can just smack it on the floor or use it on an enemy. And this is the decayed one. That's how you get the giant boomerang. OK, now this section where we're going to go ignore that death marker is going to be from the shrine over here. And we're going to be in the Lanayru wetlands and we're going to be approaching a monster fortress here. So pretty much on your map. This is exactly where I am. So you can see a nice zoom in. All right, great. I'm going to equip on my Majora's mask so enemies can't really see me. Now, I'm going to show you exactly where our boomerang target is going to be. So I'm just going to go past these guys over here. Just ignore me, everyone. No worries. I'm not the bad guy. And we're going to go over to this platform. And there is one guy right over here that has what we need and that is the that's the boomerang right there so i'm just gonna hop on over they're gonna wonder what's going on over here and something that you could probably do here is take out anything electric you know let them all come close to me that's fine it's fine they don't know what's happening they don't know what's happening and that's not a threat to them and just take the boomerang and go you pretty much get my point. Just don't die like me. Get that boomerang and break that small one as well. Now let's head to the depths so you can get these nice pristine boomerangs. Now you're going to have to really trust me when I say this is going to be the location where you're going to be getting the giant pristine boomerang. It's going to be at this diamond mark on my map. If you need to see that and have better clarity, it's going to be pretty much north of this light route over here. And it's going to be underneath the Marietta Exchange Ruins, which is right by Lindor's Brow Skyview Tower. So you, if you you want to match up the map to the sky it's gonna be right over here okay and when you get there you're going to see a giant giant stone pillar and on top of that stone pillar is going to be pretty much three ghosts and one of them will have your boomerang this is one of the hardest weapons i had to find in the game i looked all over the map i just could not find the large boomerang and this is going to be the spot where i found mine and i really suggest to save yourself some time please go ahead and go to this exact spot now something pretty cool Right from this spot, there is actually going to be another location that has a boomerang RNG close by to it. That is a small boomerang. 
And here is where a pristine boomerang spawns. I marked pristine boomerangs with a heart, but usually they randomly rotate between single-handed weapons. There are a couple more hearts I did put on the map so you guys can see. We have one over here all the way to the west by this light route. I found one all the way up here by this light route. So they're in random spots. I don't know what exactly determines it, but that's one I 100% saw that has one. So anything with a heart on my map, you can grab that and RNG for a regular boomerang if that is what you want. So there you go. Those is a big boomerang and the little boomerangs. Now you know where to get them. Now, if you're looking for a pristine cobble crusher, Elden Mountain is going to be your hot spot to get get it hot spot because it's hot. No, that wasn't the point. This is going to be the best spot to get it. And one of the caves that I like to go to, because listen, like likes are pretty OP and they give you whatever you want when you save spam in front of them is the Lake into Knock Cave. And within this cave, you're gonna be finding a like like as you break rocks and get towards this lava area. It's gonna be a really important cave to go to because there is a hidden shrine down over there. Anyway, what you wanna do is save in front of this like like. You can keep reloading for a specific weapon of your choice. And we're gonna be going for the Cobble Crusher because that is going to be our Goron weapon pretty much that we need. So let's go ahead, knock this like like and start beating it senselessly. And it's dead. And let's hope we get our cobble crusher. And we're gonna reload. And we got ourselves a cobble crusher. There we go, after a couple tries. So just take your cobble crusher once you get it from any like like or from anywhere in the Elden area and just go ahead yeah. and break it. And once you break yeah. it, it's going to unlock yeah. the pristine version of your cobble crusher down in the depths. So let's go ahead and grab that pristine cobble crusher. All right, and as you arrive in the depths, you should come across yourself a cobble crusher. Now this cobble crusher is located right over here on the map, but I have gotten multiple ones from this. So this is literally right underneath Death Mountain. I marked the swords up for you guys so you can see that there are multiple locations where there are double handed weapons. So there's one over here, there's one over here. I marked a few also over here by the this uh, abandoned Elden mine. I was mostly lucky in getting the cobble crushers in these three specific areas in Elden Mountain. So yeah, there it is, a pristine cobble crusher that is not decayed and that does a lot more damage and is a lot more durable than the other ones in the game. So attach that with a stone and, or something really tough and you can break a lot of stuff. So enjoy your cobble crusher. Now you know how to get every single pristine weapon in the game. So you should subscribe and check out this video over here. Seriously, it, you'll learn something else in the game.